But when we came to these hostile American shores, we had to figure out how to survive. And that survival was not easy. It was not easy because those who were in the slave quarters found themselves in a situation where, and all of, all of the, most of the founding fathers were slaveholders. And in this slaveholding nation, it was brutal, particularly in the slave quarters. Because in those slave quarters, the men took advantage of black women. Sexual assault and rape took place. It's one of the most brutal things that happened to us. But black women, even in those circumstances, had to also take those children, make them their children. And then there were black men who were helpless to do anything because if they did anything, they would be lynched and killed. The black women had to therefore bear that and, and in fact hold those families together and fight for our freedom. And then when we were free, to try to hold the families together. But hold them together within a system where we had patriarchy. Patriarchy is a system of male dominance. And so even within the race, we had some of that infused in us too. So we had to also deal with this question. But we also had people, and some of the names have been, have been mentioned, we just have to give them a shout out as well. Among them, Harriet Tubman. And the reason why that's important is that patriarchy is about the notion of women's inferiority. Just as black people were said to be inferior, women have had to have a double affliction because women are also supposed to be have men inferior because of their gender, which of course is nonsense. We see that being, that myth being destroyed every day and destroyed by strong black women. But among those strong black women was Harriet Tubman, who demonstrated who she was. Because Harriet Tubman freed hundreds of, of enslaved people, time and time again, carrying her rifle, knowing how to go through the Underground Railroad. And she said, I could have freed a whole lot more slaves, but Many of them did not know they were slaves. In other words, they still had a slave mentality. They did not necessarily want to leave the plantation. She was so powerful that she went into the Union Army. She was a spy in the Union Army. She was a spy in the Union Army, and she then, because why did she do that? Because she wanted to fight to liberate her people. It was not necessarily about being a part of the Union. Nothing wrong with that, but she was fighting to liberate her people. So during the truth, another strong black woman fighting with the liberation of black people. White women were fighting with the liberation of women, but they were not necessarily talking about the liberation of black women. So what did she say? She said, well, wait a minute. Ain't I a woman? What she meant by that is, look, you can't be fighting for your liberation without fighting for my liberation. So time and time again, what we have seen is strong black women rising to the occasion. Black, black women in particular bore the blood in a patriarchal society because they wanted to subject and brutalize black men because it was mano a mano, who could crush black men, then they thought they had something to do But yes, and, and so many, many hundreds of black men and some women, but mostly men were lynched. But guess, guess who helped lead the charge to liberate black people? A woman named Ida B. Wells, who went around as a journalist fearlessly fighting for and demanding that this country stop lynching black people. But beyond that, as our community began to grow and develop, we had people who came forward to help build institutions. I look at my mommy over here, and she just reminded me of Mary McLaughlin too. She just kind of looks like Mary McLaughlin. Here's a woman who was brilliant, capable, and able. She did everything she could. She baked cookies, she baked food, she went out and sold stuff in order to build an education for black people. Because she understood that ignorance is not bliss, it is catastrophic, knowledge is power. And so she helped to build an institution that's called Bethune Cookman College. It stands today. That is the legacy of Mary McLeod Bethune. Not only that, she created an organization called the National Council of Negro Women, which exists to this very day. Then they said, well, black people don't know nothing about no business. Oh, no. But there was people who said, oh, no, no, we need to do business as well. We need to do many, 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 many things. So I just wanted to start that way uh, because it is Women's History Month. 
And is it said in the African proverb, proverb what? Women are the rock, the base of our community. But we still have more work to do today. And I want to say something particularly to my brothers in the room. Because a lot of what happens in the community today in terms of the murder and fratricide has to deal with our attitude towards women. It's about equality. Men and women are equal. We must treat our sisters as equals. They had to fight in the civil rights movement to have their rightful place. Women are not our property. They are not our appendages. And we must treat our women with dignity and respect, not as some like, not, yeah, we want you, we can uphold them, but they're our equals. Queen and Zinga, Queen and Zinga helped lead the fight against enslavement. We have people who are in the army now. Women are proven that they can do anything. There are no limits. So this idea that I own you, I own has got to go, brother. We gotta have a new set of attitude. And by that new set of attitude, there's no such thing as women do the cooking and, and raise the children. We do no, no, no. It's all of that that's done together. I do most of the cooking in my house. Amen. I will cook. You see what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, brothers, we have to really deal with this issue about how we relate to our sisters as equals, as our partners in this struggle. Now let me just tell you about why I'm also excited. Because we want you to be interfacing and engaging with black sisters and brothers from all over the world. Coming to a State of the Black World Conference 5 right here in the city of Baltimore. And I'm excited because I know that your energy is so urgently needed. Because if you really think about our history, the history that Sister Kim was talking about, I got into this work working with the NAAC when I was 14 years old. If you look at the whole struggle of, 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 of some of the cutting edge freedom fighters, we just looked at it, we just saw, you just saw President Biden at a, at a bridge and saw bloody Sunday. You saw John Lewis, you see him all the time. How old was John Lewis? John Lewis was a young man. He was in his 20s. By the way, I was at the March on Washington. In 1963, guess what I was there, in 1963, I was there. I'm 80 years old right now, that's all. Yes, clap for that, 80 years old. But John Lewis, young people, the Student non Warranty Coordinating Committee, young people. In fact, it has always been young people at the forefront. When you think about El Hospital, El Shabazz, and El he was assassinated. He was only 39 years old. He was 39 years old. But they were mentored. If you look at the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, you look at people like Ella Baker. Without Ella Baker, there is no Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. It was Ella Baker who taught them and trained them. She was in the background. Perhaps she wanted to be in the background, but she taught them. And then you see others who came to the forefront. Fanny Lou Hamer. And by the way, let's get this straight. Education is valuable, but you gotta have, and I community, mean, you gotta have some motherhood, you gotta have some common sense, and you also need to have some black history and culture. Because if you don't have black history and culture, you have not, you don't have a sense of who you are. If you don't think you're somebody, you will destroy yourself because you don't have a sense of who you are. And one of the most damaging things that Malcolm said that happened to us was when they tried to take our names. What does that mean? Culture. Culture is the stuff that makes people stick. That's why we have Black History Month. That's why we had Carla G. Bush, and he talked about the miseducation of the Negro, because if you're learning about everybody but yourself, you will turn on yourself and love everybody else but yourself. And that is a prescription for murder, fratricide, and disaster in the street. And in part, we're suffering from that. And we're counting on you to know that history, to know who you are, and when you know who you are, you will be proud, strong women and men fighting for the liberation of black people. Against all odds, because it's not easy. You lose some, you win some, but you believe, you know your history, and when you know your history, you will never ever turn back. When Malcolm talked about taking our names, we have to recapture our names as we move forward. So at this conference, at this conference, at this conference, you're gonna meet people all over the world, we're going to be talking about issues that you are perfectly capable of dealing with. 
the whole question of water as a human right, environmental justice, ecology, that affects all of us all over the world. We're going to be talking about gentrification, about how our culture, people are coming into our neighborhoods and taking over our communities and disrupting our communities. Gentrification as a state of emergency. We're going to be talking about socially responsible economic development and business development because we need to stop this idea that the only thing we can do is get a job. We need to create our own jobs and create our own entrepreneurial best development. And some of y'all are doing it. In fact, one of the most important things about hip hop was hip hop came on the scene and what? They didn't wait on the industry. They created their own industry. One of the great triumphs, really, of the history of our people is hip hop. Because hip hop persons began to do that. They were selling records out of the back of their cars and whatever. They were not waiting for the system to employ them. They became entrepreneurs. And you too can become entrepreneurs. And we're going to be dealing with the role of hip hop in the black freedom struggle. Sister Kim is going to be working down with a brother named Len Reverend Lennox, you're your boy in the hip hop caucus, because they're also at the forefront of fighting for social justice and social change. We have some people who glorify realness. We just be talking about it because it's real. And sometimes they get negative and talking about all the stuff that's negative and so forth and so on. Well, realness is important, but the main thing is to move from realness to revolution. That's what Malcolm X did. He was living in realness. But he didn't wallow in his realness. He was like a petty thug. He went to prison and all that. He turned prison into a university. And when he converted to Islam, converted whatever he wanted to, he found himself. And when he found himself, he became one of the baddest revolutionaries in the history of my people because he then used his talent for the liberation of our people. We also want to have a session dealing with all the murders and fratricides that's running in our community. We're going to be dealing with people all over the country who are working on how to deal with it and how to correct that. We're going to be dealing with, with sessions also uh, dealing with economic development. I think I already mentioned that. So there are going to be eight different areas that you're going to be able to interface with. But also you're going to get a chance to interface with we have the president of Ghana. Ghana was the first nation in Africa to regain its independence. President Adu will be here. You'll get an opportunity to interface with them. Talking about women in, in, in Colombia, outside of Brazil, the United States of America, then in Brazil. Brazil has the largest number of black people in the hemisphere, even larger than the United States of America in Brazil. Sister Kim, you know the figures more than I know, it's at least probably 80 million. At least. 80 million. But outside of Brazil, Colombia has some 5 million black. There are black people all over Central and South America. And in Colombia, the first Afro-descendant woman vice president is going to be here. She's invited to come, Francine Marquez. And then Barbados, Beijing woman, first time in the history, Maya Moore Motley, coming here to meet you and meet with you. And for you to welcome her, to be in a relationship with her, but also young people who are also coming from all over the world.